All right, we're moving on to BE with Air. So I'm going to start with just a quick um, tip for understanding the air barium distribution in large intestine. So if you remember back to upper GI, the fundus on the stomach is posterior, and that's how we understand where the barium will fall depending on patient position. Well, with the large intestine, the transverse colon is anterior. So in this picture, air is black and barium would be white, right? Similar to that of how it's going to be on your fluoro images, not your overheads, but your fluoro spots. So when the patient is supine, the transverse colon is anterior. So it's sitting higher up than the flexures. So transverse colon is anterior and sigmoid, right? Your um, ascending and descending are sit further back. So those are gonna pool with contrast. Air is gonna rise into here. When you're prone, it's reversed. When you're down on your stomach, your transverse colon is anterior. The barium is gonna pool in the transverse colon, okay? So keep that in mind as we move forward here. So double enema routine, remember du double is air. So you're either gonna do PA and AP. Most often we just do AP. Remember, just like KUB, if your patient is slim and slender, you can center right to iliac crest. If they're a larger, wider patient, you do two cross. If they're even bigger than that, you might have to do the four quadrants, okay? Just like KUB, get all your flexures all the way down to the rectum. So prone and supine. So supine, air in the transverse, prone, barium in the transverse. Uh, the AP axial or axial oblique LPO projections, these are the same as the single contrast, okay? So they're either supine with that 30 to 40 cephalad angle, or they're in the LPO with the same angle. And this is for the sigmoid colon. Remember, toes up, angle up, toes down, angle down. Okay. For BE with air, you're not going to do obliques, you're going to do decubitus, right? Because we have air involved, we want to see an air fluid level. So you're going to do two decubes. You're going to do a right lateral and a left lateral. And remember, the side down is the decubitus. So his right side is down. He's super happy about it. Look at his smile. Right side is down. Left side is up. All right. You're going to center to the, to the iliac crest, right, or a little bit above. Always look for your flexures. How high is the flexure? when the radiologist is flooring, they're basically giving you a snapshot of where the patient's anatomy is. So if I notice they have a high flexure, I'm gonna center a little bit higher, right? But on the decubitus images, we are looking at the side up or the air side. We are not looking at the side with the contrast in it. We're looking at the side up with air. So I want you to know which side of interest. So medial side of the ascending, lateral side of the descending. Okay, I think I have that in this one here. Side up or air side. So medial ascending, lateral descending. Looking for air fluid level. See the flat line here? That's an air fluid level right there. So I automatically know this is a decubitus. If this image comes up on my boards, it won't have a left marker here. It's not gonna give you that. How do I know this is a right lateral decubitus? I know it's a decubitus because I see an air fluid level. I know this is a right lateral decubitus because the right side is down, how do I know that? The left flexure is always higher, right? Why is the left flexure higher? The liver sits over here, right? Kind of bigger organ, okay? Pushes everything down. Left side, up high here. So if I'm just looking at this picture, ignore that marker. I know it's a decubitus for air fluid level. I look to my flexure. My left flexure is way up high here. I know this is a right lateral decubitus, okay? Then your left lateral decubitus, you're just gonna flip everything. Same thing, we're looking at side up, and that's gonna be the air side, because air rises, fluid drops. So medial descending, lateral ascending, okay? Which side are you looking at? Side up, we're looking at this side up of there. How do I know if this is a right or left lateral? Decubitus, I know it's decubitus, I'm seeing a straight line across. I know it's a decube, I've got an air fluid level. Horizontal beam, right? It's horizontal beam, no angle. Left flexure is higher. I know this is the side down because fluid drops. Okay, so this is the left lateral decubitus. 
a ventral decube, or your text will most likely call it a cross-table lateral rectum. So in the single contrast, we did a lateral rectum, just like we do a lateral sacrum coccyx or a lateral L5S1. For the double BE, you're going to do a cross-table lateral rectum. Why? Air fluid levels. All right. So 10 by 12 down here. Um, I tend to do bottom of my film, bottom of the butt, just like I do for sacrum coccyx. Your cassette will have a grid on it, unlike this gentleman's, okay? You're going to have a horizontal beam shooting across. Your patient's going to be prone on their stomach, okay? Central ray, 5 to center, five to 7 cm above the level of the pubic symphysis, mid-axillary plane. What does that mean? Shooting through. Don't let, I call it the junk in the trunk, distract you, right, from where the anatomy lies, okay? Watch for that. Your radiologist may ask you for a post-evacuation. What does that mean? You're going to ask your patient, um, after you remove the tip from their rectum, you're going to ask the patient to get up and use the bathroom and try and evacuate as much of that contrast as they can. When they come out of the bathroom, you're going to either take a PA or an AP, most likely an AP, and we call it a post-evac. This is on cart or table, cart or stretcher, right? Or table, depending on your patient. Same as if you do an AP abdomen, you're either going to do one single to the crest, uh, two crosswise or four quadrants, whatever you're doing for your patient. You want to include all of the intestines, okay? So, and then mark it. You want to put post-evac. You want to annotate post-evac right onto that image so they know. When they're looking at all the images together, they want to know which one is the post-evac. They just want to see how much that patient, patient can get out, how much residual will they have. An upright is extremely rare. I don't even think it's in your textbook anymore, um, but we used to have to do these when I was a student. It's an upright one, 40 inches, you center at the iliac crest. The air fluid level will just be a horizontal like this one. So if you were to see that, that's an upright. Specialty view, I know I talked about this a little bit, but in your book, um, it talks about the alternate view for the AP axial sigmoid. This is PA axial or PA axial oblique. Almost the same. So when they're prone, toes down, angle down. So you're going to reverse your angle and angle 30 caught ed. You're going to do an RAO instead of an LPO. It's just a reverse of everything. All right. Similar RAO or PA axial. Okay. This was just another image here. Toes down, angle down, opening up the sigmoid colon. Um, sometimes you will have to do an enema through a uh, colostomy bag. So sometimes we're looking to see if there's proper healing, if there's an obstruction or a leakage. Um, most often the exam through the colostomy is to see if they can reattach to the colon and the patient can start evacuating out of their rectum instead of into a bag. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more in detail later on, but there are different tips for a colostomy or your radiologist may ask for um, a catheter. The catheters, the urinary catheters have balloons on them, so they may use that as well. You want to make sure that your patient has an extra bag to place on at the end of your exam. Water soluble, soluble BE, sorry, I always stumble over that word. We use ISOBU 300, so that water-soluble contrast. Sometimes the radiologist will ask for a one-to-one -one ratio with water. What does that mean? One container of contrast, you then fill that container with water. That's one container of ISOBU, one to water, shake it like you mean it. Anytime you see question of perforation, you always want to use water-soluble. Why? Water. Our body absorbs water soluble. If you use barium and there's a perforation, the barium will sit there until someone goes in and cleans it out. Uh, a lot of times we do these pre-surgery or post-surgery or if the patient needs to be cleaned out. Um, you're going to reduce your KBP to 70 for the textbook one, but for actual clinical, we still are between like 80 and 90, around 85 KB. All right. Chronic constipation. So it's a common condition and the patients have difficult and frequent or incomplete evacuation of the bowel. Um, this happens a lot and it can even happen to um, give them a fecal impaction. So this is massive, 
massive fecal impaction. Um, contrast, the water soluble contrast tends to help with that and helps them clean it out and get rid of some of that. So it's not exactly diagnostic, but it's more therapeutic. So that may happen as well. If you do one of these water soluble clean out enemas, make sure you have that Barbie pool blown up because that patient most likely will not be able to hold that um, enema tip in and it's gonna go all over, so be prepared. Uh, just a review of patient doses per your patient position for BE. So for male versus female. Um, so a PA for a male would be, you know, 27, female 33. Left anterior oblique, male is only five, female 48. Lateral rectum, male is 24, female 352. AP axial, male six, female 65. Why do you think these are, right? The male anatomy can be shielded. It's outside the area of interest. It can be shielded. Females cannot. So a BE is much higher dose for uh, females than males. So if you think you can shield, try, but sometimes it's just a little bit too messy. So your collimation is key um, and centering accurate technical factors ideally are accurate. So just be aware females are much more susceptible to radiation in the areas for this BE exam. And that rounds that.